Hey there, have you ever visited a website and then the website has a banner that pops up and it says, this website uses cookies. Do you accept that? And then you say, okay, fine, whatever. Just get me to the website, right? Well, in this Lightboard lesson, I wanna talk about what those cookies are and what they do and how that impacts you. So cookies, uh, sometimes called, so called website cookies, sometimes called HTTP cookies, um, they are small pieces of data that a server will send back to a browser uh, to get information about the user. So if you have a web server, so I'll just put you know web server over here, and then you have you know a user over here with uh, you know browser whatever your browser choice is. If this web server, which hosts the website that you're visiting, right, if it utilizes cookies, then whenever the user sends a request in to visit the website then that web server is going to send back, um, among many other things, a, a cookie. And this cookie is going to be stored then on the user's browser so that the next time the user visits that website or the next request, then it can send back the cookie that it was sent. So I'm gonna say cookie here as well. And then that cookie is gonna have certain information about the user that the web server can then use to make decisions, or you know a host of other things, right? So the reason that you see this web, this banner popping up across all these different websites recently is uh, well, there's a few different kind of legal uh, reasons, but one of the big ones is over in in uh, Europe, the uh, the GDPR, the General Data Privacy Regulation, which went into effect uh, back in May of 2018. It requires that cookie banners be displayed on these websites that have anyone from Europe that is visiting your website, which it's like, how in the world do you know if they're from Europe or not or whatever? So most websites are like, hey, we're just gonna put the banner up there you know, for everybody. Uh, you can configure that. There are some geolocation kind of things you can do, but for the most part, people, you know, websites are like, hey, we're just gonna put it up there. Um, and if you don't comply, if you're the web server owner, if you're this website owner and you don't comply with, those, with these uh, specifically GDPR, requirements, then they impose pretty hefty financial fines and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of websites have just said, okay, fine, we're going to let these people know that we use cookies. All right. So like I said, it is a small piece of data. Each cookie is a small piece of data that the server sends back to the browser so that the server can then know information about, about the user. There's a few different uh, types of cookies, or maybe a couple of different that I'll talk about. One is a session cookie. And a session cookie is when a user visits the website, then for the duration of that user session, the cookie is good and it's going to have information about you know, where, the, where the user went, what pages did the user visit, and that kind of thing. And then when the session ends, then that session cookie is deleted and it's gone, not, you know, and it's not used anymore. And then there's a persistent cookie, and a persistent cookie has an expiration date and it's going to, <clears throat> it's going to survive the session and it's going to be long-lived for as long as the web server administrator sets it for, and, uh, and then that can be used for a host of other things as well. So there's a few different, so, so there's session and, and uh, persistent types of cookies. Uh, there's some other like HTTP only or secure cookies. Uh, you know, you can really get kind of deep into this cookie thing. But a few things that I wanted to mention about what cookies are used for is I'll put, I'll put session management. So session, um, management and this would be something like if the if the server was an online shopping center and they wanted to make sure that your shopping cart stayed you know with you as the user so let's say they have you know a whole bunch of different um, you know servers back here that serve up their web application their website to you the user and let's say you know on one request you're hitting this server and then the next one you're hitting this server whatever um, and that, that experience includes a shopping cart, then they wanna make sure that that shopping cart stays with you and they don't have to like reload, hey, you know, we just lost your cart because you went to a different server on this request or whatever it is, right? So they can do, uh, they can manage the session of the user. Uh, another example would be like online gaming, for example, if you're playing an online game and you have your high score, you know, it's like, hey, you just hit your high score. You wanna make sure your score stays with you, right? Then they can manage that as well via the use of these cookies. Um, so any kind of information that the server needs to remember about you, the user, is included in what we'll call the session management. Another example is personalization. 
So personalization. Personalization is stuff like um, your user preference, maybe some different themes or other kind of settings that you specifically like as the user of this particular web application or this website. You know, if you're like, hey, I love that blue background, or no, I want the red one or the purple one or whatever, right? Then they can use some of the cookie data um, to make sure that they give you the experience that you're looking for so they can personalize that for you. So personalization is used, um, you know, cookies are used for personalization. And then the other one that I'll mention is tracking, all right? So this is any kind of user behavior. Hey, did you visit this site? Did you click on this page? Did you click on that link? And so it can start to track your behavior, which is, uh, that's, that's where some of the sticking points come in, I think, with some of these uh, HTTP cookies is because some users say, hey, I don't want you tracking my stuff. You know, I want you to kind of let me do my thing and then y'all uh, don't, don't watch every single move I make. Um, so, but nonetheless, that can happen with cookies, right? There are another couple of, um, couple of you know, buckets of cookies uh, is what I'll call it. Uh, and they are first party cookies and then what's called third party cookies. So a first party cookie would be on a web server, let's say you went to example.com, you know, and that example.com needed to know, hey, I wanna make sure I keep you in the right shopping cart and I wanna give you that blue background and whatever. So all of the cookies related to that actual web application that are connected to example.com would be what's called first party cookies because they're directly tied to that specific web application. But then you also have what are called third party cookies and third party cookies are now cookies from a completely separate web application or completely separate domain that are gonna track your behavior on now that domain. So let me give you a quick example here. So let's say you have, you know, user down here that visits, um, let's say they visit uh, news.com, so news.com, and on the news site, you have a, uh, an ad for, um, I'll say ad.shopping.com, right? So these, so shopping.com has now contacted news.com and said, hey, we want to put an ad on your site. And not only do we want the ad on your site, we want to include a cookie so that when a user loads up your website and our ad loads in their browser, then a cookie from ad.shopping.com is going to be generated, sent back to that user, and now with any subsequent action that happens on your news.com site, that user is going to include the shopping.com cookie so that then the news.com can send information about the user back over to shopping.com, right? So let's say, so that's one thing that, that it can do. Let's say that that user also visits, uh, same user, visits uh, sports.com, all right? So sports.com, and let's say shopping.com has really uh, turned up the heat on their advertising dollars, right? So they also have an ad.shopping.com uh, on the website sports.com, all right? The exact same thing happens here. As the user loads up sports.com, the ad.shopping.com cookie is gonna be sent uh, back to the user's browser, and then sports.com can send information to ad.shopping.com. So then one day, let's say one day in the future, um, the user then visits shopping.com. Then shopping.com can say, hey user, we know you love the news. We know you love sports and baseball and you know, whatever, right? And basketball, whatever it is. And then the user's gonna be like, wait a minute, how in the world do you know all this stuff about me? This is amazing, or this is scary, or this is whatever, right? And a lot of this is the reason that they know so much about you. Um, I won't say that this is the, the whole heart and soul of it, but this is a big part of, of how all that tracking happens. Some sites, like say news.com or let's say sports.com, certainly will use their first party cookies, but they will also use many, many, many third party cookies. Uh, some sites have gone several hundred, I've seen up to 800 different third party cookies being used on one site alone, right? So all of this stuff is being tracked and all these cookies are sent back to you as the user in your browser. And frankly, as the user of this and you're just kind of clicking away, you know, clicking links and typing in stuff, you're none the wiser on this thing. I mean, you don't know that you just had 800 cookies loaded up on your browser. Um, but that gets back to that advertiser, that banner, I should say, that says, hey, we utilize cookies on this website. Do you accept or not? 
And for the vast majority of people, they're like, all right, fine, man, just get me to my news or get me to my sports, whatever, right? Um, but, uh, but you need to understand what's happening kind of behind the scenes there. Some of the browsers back here that the user would use, browsers like Firefox and Safari, actually block third-party cookies from their browsers by default uh, as of like July 2020. And then Google Chrome is planning to block uh, third-party cookies, uh, I think in like 2022. So, uh, so that's, that's upcoming here. Uh, Google Chrome will, will by default block third-party cookies. Now, some websites would say, hey, you're not going to fully experience the fullness of what our website has to offer if you block some of these cookies. Um, but that's a decision that you can make and you can say, hey, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Um, if I block cookies, then okay, so what if I can't, you know, if that ad doesn't pop up on the screen or whatever, right? Uh, and, but there may be some functionality like session management or personalization. If you block all cookies, you know, altogether, then your experience on the website that you're trying to visit may be significantly diminished. So you can kind of mess around with it, frankly. Just say, hey, okay, accept, or the next time you visit, say, nope, I do not accept. Do not, do not use any kind of cookies on me right now. Um, but nonetheless, that's, um, that's the world we live in. And so I just wanted to make sure that everyone understands, you know, when you see that little banner, this website utilizes cookies. What is that and how are they used? So I hope you've learned a little something about website cookies or HTTP cookies as they're uh, commonly called. Uh, so thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.